So are you kind of uh, still under the weather then, DG, or uh, are you kind of coming out of out of the hay fever thing? And out of time, how has your week been this past week? Keeping pretty busy, I would imagine. Yeah, I finally was able to go outside cycling again to get some vitamin D without becoming without becoming blocked up and sneezing my lungs out. Yeah, again, uh, the whole hay fever thing can be uh, really miserable and really exhausting. But uh, it's I guess it sounds like you're starting to come out of it, so that's good. And out of time, you've been extremely busy this week and you're working from home right now oh, okay what kind of uh, projects have you got going out of time And do you try to bicycle every day, DG? Or just like uh, maybe once or twice a week? Alright, I hear the creature, but where is he? Oh gosh, is that him? There we go. Gosh. Oh, I was just asking out of time what kind of uh, projects you've got go you've got going on this week. I was just curious the kind of uh, the kind of stuff that's kind of been keeping you really busy this past week. Two to three times a week, really just short bursts just to get some fresh air. 45 minutes to an hour. Why, that actually sounds a lot longer than a short burst. But I guess if you, uh, I guess if you cycle fairly quickly, then the 45 minutes to an hour probably doesn't really even seem like that if you're really enjoying enjoying your time out uh, out on the road biking. I used to bike quite a bit as a kid, but I haven't been on a bicycle since probably my 20s. Where are those? There's probably one up there, I would imagine. You know what? Can I get up onto these pipes? Nope. A bunch of home automation stuff. I'm currently writing my notes that I have no time for. <laughs> All right, let's see. I guess we gotta make the drop down. All right. They're gonna pop up here any second.
I live at the edge of town, so when I'm cycling, there are mainly farmlands around with cows and sheep, etc. And I'm not going fast, it's just a normal bicycle, not a sport one. Okay. So it's not a, uh, is it a 10 speed? Like a regular 10 speed or just a regular, I guess it's probably just a regular, yeah, just like you mentioned, a regular bicycle. Gosh, my wing stick didn't even get him. I always enjoyed, as a kid, I always enjoyed the uh, dirt bike bikes. Not the motorized ones, but the... Uh, like the BMXs. Those were always my favorite types. I never really got... Never really got into the 10 speeds. I never really got into those types of bicycles, but the, uh, the dirt bike ones I always enjoyed. Oh, it's a 7 speed? Oh. Okay. So with your 7 speed, are you, I mean, are you shifting gears like you would with a 10 speed? Alright, there was, oh, here it is. I thought there was a ladder here somewhere. I thought I was getting hit from a distance, but I couldn't see, I couldn't see where he was at. Only from standstill or going up a incline. Oh, okay, so you do switch gears with it, okay. So basically, if you throw these, if you throw these uh, wing sticks, I guess directly at the creature, then the thing will boomerang right back to your character. But if it hits, if it ever hits anything along the way. If it ever hits anything along the way, then the, uh, then the stick just disintegrates. Oh, like that. So I guess this 
rifle is not too bad against these mutants up close anyway. I started a new game after I finished Half-Life. This time it's Trespasser, a Jurassic Park game from 1998. Wow. With kind of goofy controls, but I got the hang of it. Does it seem like the controls were designed for uh, console gaming? Because maybe that's what it was originally designed for was console gaming. But then it just got ported over. It got ported over to PC or something like that. Oh, great. I'm going to have to drop down. All right. Boy, there's so much... Oh, it's more like... It feels more like VR. Oh, okay. And it's a PC-only game? Okay. Trespasser, huh? I've seen some Jurassic Park-type games. But I've never really... They've never really captured my interest... The movies, of course, were always fun. The last one I saw with, uh... I forget the guy's name. It's Chris something. Uh, but the previous Jurassic Park movie I saw was really fun. Really good. Chris something and then the actress grab the empty chemical. Oh, that's right, the chemical. Use the distiller to fill the first jug with the blue shine. You play a female who is involved in a plane crash and you basically crashed on the island of the second movie. Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. Star-Lord? What exactly is uh, Star-Lord out of time? Uh, let's see here. I guess I should probably do a save, shouldn't I? Because if I remember right, the guy that said that once you fill up one of the jugs, then you're basically going to have to do a massive standoff of mutants. The thing is, the controls... You really have one arm... And you can swing it like a noodle. You swing it around like a noodle. There's no crosshair, so when you pick up a weapon, you basically have to position the arm and twist the wrist to get the weapon iron sights lined up. But it is fun so far. Oh, okay. Yeah, Chris Pratt, that's his name. He plays Star-Lord in the Marvel movies? Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen any of his, uh, those other movies he's in. I just saw him in the, uh, in the Jurassic Park film that came out a couple years ago. Alright, let's go ahead and fight this onslaught of, uh, enemies. Uh, let's see, what do I do? Oh, okay.
Oh, crud. Uh, I need to change my weapons up. I don't have... Oh, and I can't make any more wing sticks. Alright. I can't make any more bandages. Alright, so this is the authority gun, which is almost out of ammo. Let's see, where's that positioned at? The lower one? Alright, I'm gonna have to go with the shotgun. And put that down there. Then the nail gun is there. The rifle. Uh, well, I guess we'll assign that one to here. I think the Jurassic Park reboots with Chris Pratt were enjoyable. Yeah, I really enjoyed the one that he was in than the previous one. I don't remember the name of it. It might have been Jurassic World. Oh, come on! Oh, I'm stuck in the game. I'm stuck behind the stupid distillery. Are you seriously kidding me? I'm stuck in the... Thanks a lot, game. Jurassic World 1 and 2, but they aren't reboots. They're a continuation of the movies. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're basically their own stories. Let's see. I will say, however, they kind of felt like... I mean, they weren't all that original. You know what, I better change my weapons now while I've got a chance. I mean, they really weren't, it really wasn't all that of an original story. But it was, uh, I mean, it was still fun nonetheless, that's for sure. Okay, shotgun. Well, I'll assign you to there. And then... We'll assign this one to here. And then the pistol... I might as well start using this. We'll assign this one to the nail gun. But yeah, I still definitely enjoyed them. Boy, using this. Cried. Oh. 
uh, these pistol rounds. Use the distiller to fill the other blue jug. Okay. So now I gotta fill up another one. Alright. Let me do a quick save here. Not all original, that's pretty much how I feel with the modern games. It's why I play the older games now. They're simple and they work, and it's where everything started. Yeah, there's definitely a... Uh, certainly a nostalgia factor there. With the uh, older games, that's for sure. I think I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm probably going to have to get that shotgun extender. Take the jugs to Dietrich. All right. This way, I guess. Oh, good grief. Can I, uh... There we go. Alright. Do another quick save there. But yeah, this was actually something I was thinking about just yesterday. Um, you know how they always say the golden age of movies? It was probably from the 1920s to the 1940s. So the 20s, 30s, and 40s was kind of like that golden age of, of cinema. But I almost, and I know I'm saying this as a child of the 80s, but personally I almost feel that's kind of, another golden age was the 1980s. Uh, I began thinking about all the different films that came out in the 80s. I mean, there's just there are just so many original stories and memorable characters and so many movie lines that come straight out of films from the 1980s that, uh, I mean, it really isn't any wonder that Hollywood has been doing so many reboots from films from the 1980s. There were just so many original, classic films that came out in that 10 year span in that decade. Yeah, there were definitely a lot of good ones that came out in the 1990s as well. There was a lot of a lot of good original movies from the 1980 from 1980 until 2000, but definitely within the 1980s, 
I mean, everything from adventure to thrillers to horror to romance to comedies uh, to movie series. I mean, it was just a really good decade of of storytelling and movie making back then. And uh, so kind of in conjunction, kind of in relation to what you're saying there, DG, about video games, that's kind of the way I feel about movies nowadays. There's nothing really... I mean, certainly the uh, Marvel Universe has been pretty, pretty successful as a series, but also just as movies go. Uh, they've been a pretty solid original, you know, original set of films. But, uh, and there's certainly been some good ones in the past 19 years. But it just seems like there's a lot of lack of original stories and characters in the last 19 years that we just, that we had back in the 19, 1980s. <laughs> All right, I guess I gotta go this way. My two favorites, of course, the Back to the Future films and Aliens. Yeah, I mean, just a couple examples of some really original, memorable stories and characters in filmmaking. The most recent movie I've seen that I found was awesome was Overlord from 2018. It's basically a Return to Castle Wolfenstein movie. Overlord, huh? I'll have to see if I can. Uh, I'll have to see if I can check that one out then. And that's a movie from last year, huh? You know what? I came in the distillery through this door, I believe. But now it's not letting me out. Also, I saw a... I didn't read the whole article, but I saw a, a headline that Sylvester Stallone is working on another Rambo movie. Have you guys heard or read anything about that? The guy's like 72 years old, for goodness sake. And he's wanting to do another Rambo movie. Or he's actually currently working on another Rambo movie. The son of Kurt Russell is an overlord? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out, because Kurt Russell... Of course, he had some really memorable 1980s films. One of my favorites from John Carpenter was uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, but then there was also Escape from L.A., his uh, Snake Plissken character was just really a lot of fun. 